An emergency airworthiness directive was issued yesterday effectively grounding the entire fleet worldwide of all Boeing company MD-11 and MD-11-F aircraft. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. Let's check it out. Pretty soon after the loss of UPS Flight 2976, both UPS and FedEx agreed to ground their entire fleet of MD-11 and MD-11F freighter aircraft. Here's the full statement from UPS issued 7 November, one day after the crash. Out of an abundance of caution and in the interest of safety, we've made the decision to temporarily ground our MD-11 fleet. The MD-11s are approximately 9% of the UPS Airlines fleet. The grounding is effective immediately. We made this decision proactively at the recommendation of the aircraft's manufacturer. Remember, the aircraft's manufacturer now is Boeing Aircraft because of the merger of McDonnell Douglas and Boeing. Now, yesterday on the 8th of November, we get this emergency AD or airworthiness directive from the FAA. There's the number of the AD. Is sent to owners and operators of the Boeing company model MD-11 and MD-11F airplanes. This emergency AD was prompted by an accident where the left hand engine and pylon detached from the airplane during takeoff. The cause of the detachment is currently under investigation. This condition could result in the loss of continued safe flight and landing. Well, we know that. The FAA is issuing this AD because the agency has determined the unsafe condition is likely to exist or developed in other products of the same type design. This AD prohibits further flight until the airplane is inspected and all applicable corrective actions are performed using the approved method by manager AIR 520, Continued Operational Safety Branch, FAA. Now here's a case where we have an AD grounding an aircraft, but we have no corrective actions in place yet. There's no way to comply with this AD to return your aircraft to airworthiness at this time. These aircraft are simply grounded. The FAA considers this AD to be an interim action. If, if final action is later identified, the FAA might consider further rulemaking then. Is this the end of the MD-11 fleet? It's way too early to tell. Normally when an airworthiness directive comes out, it goes through an entire long process, including a public comment period, where everybody gets a chance to get their input in until they decide what the final nature of the AD is going to be. But in a situation like this, where the FAA states an unsafe condition exists that requires the immediate adoption of this emergency AD to all known U.S. operators, owners and operators of these airplanes, the FAA has to forego the process and just publish this as an emergency AD. And my question is, was this developed by the FAA or more than likely it was developed by the FAA in collaboration with Boeing aircraft. And I suspect Boeing is trying to limit their liability as a result of this disaster. But that is just my opinion. So now we're back looking at the design of this engine and pylon mount. Here's the wing. Here's the three fuse pins or frangible links that connect the pylon and engine to the wing of the aircraft. These links are designed to fail in the event of some sort of catastrophic situation with the engine so that it will shear clean of the wing without compromising the structure of the wing. And then here's the two engine mounts, a forward and an aft engine mount. And as the NTSB has stated, they found that the engine departed the aircraft with the pylon still attached to the engine. So the pylon failed up here at the wing mount. And the FAA says they're issuing this AD because the agency has determined that an unsafe condition is likely to exist or develop in other products of the same type design. But what's critical, <laughs> the critical thing that we don't know at this point is what failed first. Did the pylon fail on its own or was there something gone catastrophically wrong with the engine that subsequently caused the pylon to fail? Are we grounding these aircraft for the correct reason? Is it a problem with the pylon or is it a wider problem with the engine? Or is it a problem with a combination of the two where an engine problem 
can prematurely cause the pylon to fail. For example, in the case of Americans Flight 383 back in October of 2016, where the crew was able to reject the takeoff and get the aircraft safely stopped and everybody evacuated before they took off, a failure of the high pressure turbine section resulted in debris being flung thousands of feet away from the aircraft, creating a tremendous amount of damage and a wing fire that effectively destroyed the aircraft. And here's a closer look at some of the damage done to the aircraft and the wing itself as a result of this high pressure turbine liberating high speed parts all throughout the aircraft. Had one of these parts struck the pylon in just the right location, it could have easily compromised the pylon. All these parts came out of this section of the engine here, and this was another GE CF6 engine, same type of engine that was on the UPS flight. And the only evidence we have so far on the UPS flight is this grainy photo here. We're looking at this area, which may very well be the low pressure portion of the turbine section. Now let me show you something about uh, pylon engineering. Obviously these wing pylon mounts are subject to a lot of forces, but there's an additional force that they're subject to when the aircraft rotates for takeoff. In fact, it's the strongest force that these pylons are ever subjected to is the moment that the aircraft rotates the nose up to takeoff, gyroscopic precession puts a tremendous twist, twisting load on these mounting points. So if there is a compromise of the pylon, this is the most likely time when the pylon will fail, right at rotation. Let's go out in the hangar and I'll give you a demonstration. The greatest forces experienced on a pylon is at rotation, when the aircraft rotates on takeoff. It's not necessarily maneuvering or dutch rolls. Numerous studies have been done. They found that it was the rotation that caused the greatest forces on the pylon. Why? Because of gyroscopic precession. The engine is spinning in this direction, same as on the prop here on the Husky, if you're looking straight ahead at the jet. And when you rotate your engine up, it turns twists to the right, 90 degrees to the right. Why? Because of gyroscopic precession, you put a, nine, you put a force input like this to rotate the aircraft up, rotating the engine. Gyroscopic precession is gonna put in a force 90 degrees and twist the engine to the right. And this goes a long way to explaining why the number one engine on the left wing was found on the right side of the runway. So the question remains, do we have a problem with the design of the pylon on the MD-11 or do we have a larger problem with the GE engines? Regardless, the safe thing to do right now is just to ground the fleet while we sort this out. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.